Okay, the Oscars, so Grover, it took about 3 hours, 42 minutes, I think. But, and, but hey, let's say, let's give it, I gotta give it a great round of applause to Neil Patrick Harris. I mean, that intro, say what you want about the intro being just like anything from the, you know, like making it feel like it was the Tonys. You have to remember, this show was being produced by Craig Zidon and Neil Marin, who have known him, who knew him through his Tony work, and the fact that these two men have a hand in making certain production value, certain productions on whether it's TV or stage feel like a musical, you know. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> anyway, and bonus points to Neil for standing out there in just his underwear. I mean, let's be fair, we already saw him in his, un you already saw him in his underwear in Gone Girl. Okay. So, I guess for him, it's like, I, I could understand that he was trying to top Helen's Oscar, massive Oscar selfie, which broke the internet. But, um, same time, he pretty much figured that's the best thing I could do is just stand out there in nothing but my skivvies. Yeah. I mean, I'm not disappointed, but I applaud, I'm not at all disappointed by what I saw, so I gotta go ahead and applaud him. Um, also, mega bonus points to Lady Gaga for her performance. I mean, yes, everybody sang, I, I'm pretty very sure everybody sang No Perfect, but Lady Gaga just hit it out of the, she may have intended to like aim for the bleachers, but she managed to take that out of the ballpark. And where it landed, I we may never get it back. Because we don't, we're not going to, we're going to ask for a returns policy. Anyway, um, I mean, I gotta give, I even, I even gotta give credit to Patton Oswalt, who on Twitter himself couldn't say anything snarky about it. Um, needless to say, I'm also very happy. It's, I, I will admit that in terms of my picks, based on what I was reading, um, of the 25, of 24 categories, I only got 15 right, so I'll be, I'm definitely not going to get that Blu-ray player, and I'm afraid I'm not going to win anything else, as far as I can see. <coughs> but, um, I kind of wish that when, <laughs> I kind of wish that entire Lego movie song, Everything Is Awesome, was done completely with Legos, but I guess, you know, let's be fair, it would have been cheap, I guess, if it was just strictly Legos, and needless to say, Emma Stone can be happy to say she's going home with an uh, with a Lego made Oscar award. Anyway, <coughs> I don't know who else got one. I think Steve Carell. However, um, let's see, what else should I bring up about the Oscars? Yeah, the way they handled. Yeah, a lot of great good speeches. I mean, kudos to J.K. Simmons for telling people to actually talk to their parent over the phone. Uh, you gotta really be feel like there were several moving speeches that covered all kinds of important issues, from equal pay for men and women to fighting for equal, still continually fighting for equal rights, not just in terms of gender. Race and the um, fact that this is a nation of immigrant founded by immigrants. <coughs> hmm. I mean, needless to say, um, and I, I want to also give bonus points for making sure Miles Teller played the drums like he could have for Whiplash, but it was meant for the movie Birdman. Um, <coughs> see, what else to add? Um, um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think they have the highlights are, are Neil Patrick Harrison is underwear, the speeches, 
I can only imagine if some people are going to discuss the banter between Melanie Griffith and Dakota Johnson before the Oscars, because it did start off with Laura Spencer asking the question that she, that she, with Laura, probably bothered to just do a little research, like I didn't find out already, the fact that, um, this is happening, the fact that, hey, Melanie said she was not going to see the movie, and, and it, to be fair, it's about the content, because she's kind of a problem the content, she can't, I don't know if she could ever really watch her own flesh and blood pretend to have sex, alone. I mean, <laughs> this is Melanie Griffith we're talking about, not Brian Williams, so to each his own. Anyway, um, yeah, I was going to mention that this was the first time in Oscar history where every movie nominated for Best Picture took home at least one award. Um, I guess I, I, if there was any low point throughout it, it's just that um, Neil's running joke about having his own his own pre-written Oscar predictions kept in a suitcase monitored by Octavia Spencer or Robert Duvall for that matter. He, it was funny once he finally was reading them aloud and, I'm go and I can only say that he just moved through it as fast as he could. And hey, for those that wondered what was John Travolta thinking when he misspoke, mispronounced Idina Menzel's name last year. Yeah, I'm I hope you already tuned in to Jimmy Kimmel Live. Because then that that appearance answered everything. From I mean, because I already knew somehow that he was there for the dress rehearsal, like, which is what something many people speculated. But um, it's weird. Still, it's weird. It it's really weird to me. Okay, because all I can say is okay. I understand the fact that you're given pronunciation key or pad and or chart in front of you which really baffled my mind because you know I mean if you were there for the rehearsal you already knew how, you already said Adina Menzel you should have I mean I'm sure you said Adina Menzel at the rehearsal um I should also point out of course what Jennifer Hudson did is similar to what Bette Midler did in last year's Oscars, and I can only imagine if that song's going to go up in popularity, if, if only could climb the charts, because believe me, I haven't, I'm kind of mystified that she's not really conquering the charts with a voice that great. Anyway, um, yeah, I, w I would have to say for me personally, the Say what you want about all the various speeches. I thought that the most, the best reaction, hands down, has to go to Eddie Redmayne for the theory of everything. He was genuinely shocked. And I was too, in a way, because I thought that the edge was going to go to Bent Michael Keaton. But I guess Michael's not that miserable about it because he's happy to be in the movie that won Best Picture, Best Director, Best Original Screenplay, and had already won the Independent Spirit Award the day before. Hmm. Weird. Anyway, um... Trying to think here, um... Oh, I don't know, of course I don't want to look overlook in terms of other performance. I think... I'm pretty sure many people are going to say Lady Gaga gave the best performance, but we also should not overlook John Legend in common. I guess they're gonna have to. I mean, yeah, they got three standing O's, so to speak. <laughs> um, hmm. What else do I add? In terms of yeah, you know what? I really have to. I think it's quite interesting to notice that the tagline for this year's Oscars was. Um, imagine what's possible, but it really should be, and maybe this will apply next year, I hope it's a forever trending quote or topic next year, you know, 
stay different, stay weird. Um, you know, it was, it was great to see Julie Andrews there, but could they not get Christopher Plummer? Or is he just sick and tired? Is he still completely sick and tired of the movie? Because last I, I can remember going back all the way to 1994, he said that he has referred to that movie as the sound of mucus. Oh well. Um, I do want to, let's, well, I have some, with the remaining time I have left here, I do want to try something a bit audacious and try and make some wild predictions for next year's Oscars because I did look at a list of films that expect to open in theaters this from, you know, from now until you know, December 31st and let me just say, I'm pretty sure, I have a funny feeling that maybe The, like the Walk and Snowden, two movies that both happen to have um, Joseph Gordon Levin and Leeds are both going to be nominated for Best Picture, at least The Walk, hopefully. And maybe, I don't know, maybe Joseph will be nominated for Snowden. Um, but if I can foresee another one or two, maybe, Meryl Streep movies. I know there are going to be two more Meryl Streep, two more Meryl Streep movies opening. Um, but I think she's most likely to be nominated for Suffragette as well. And what the hell, why not? Helena Bonham Carter and um, Carrie Mulligan. I don't see why not. Then, um, let's see. Uh, la, 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 la. Uh, well, I guess in terms of animated movies, I think there's. Let's see. I don't know if SpongeBob SquarePants counts because there's, you know, Antonio Banderas is there in the Flesh and Blood, but and it is 3D. I guess why not? But there's also, um, let's see, I'm sure Inside Out we nominated. There's Home. Um, that should be nominated. Maybe that's it. I don't know. It's kind. Of, I mean, it's hard enough for me to try and imagine who. Um, I don't know who could be. Who, see, I don't even know who could be nominated for Best Director. And you know what I also want to point out? Okay, yeah. Okay, it was a Caucasian, pretty a Caucasian sensation. But the winner of Best Director is a Mexican. Um, or is he Spanish? Yeah, yeah, they both are, yeah. I'm sorry, maybe he has Spanish roots. And then um, I couldn't help but joke that, per, that the of all the people to be on stage the longest, that are not Caucasian. Technically, I would, I would, I would, I, I tweeted this out that the the only non non Caucasian to be on that stage the longest was Jack Black. Get it? Okay, lame enough, I guess. But um, let's see, I don't know what else to add. Hmm. Should I mention that I kind of wish Gone Girl was nominated for Best Director and Best Picture and Best Score and I don't know. And we have to remember that for, as fortunate as it was, David Oyelowo or Carmen Jojo or Gojo or Ijogo, Ijago were overlooked, for example, um, it would also have been Right, you know, we have to remember that this happens practically every year during the Oscar ceremonies. Even sometimes the Emmys, maybe Tonys or other award shows that award shows that are telecasted universally um, worldwide. I mean, we overlooked um, Jake Gyllenhaal and Nightcrawler. Hey, I, I hope you know what I can only hope that next year Jake Gyllenhaal maybe gets nominated for Southpaw and wins. I mean, I saw the body; he's got my vote forever. <laughs> He'd have a broke back mountain me. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> or I'd get a broke back mountain him. No. Um, sorry. Yeah. The <sighs> yes, all I have to s I don't know what else to say now in closing, but I don't know when the next time I'll be able to submit this. Who knows if it'll be this weekend, if it'll be this weekend or not. But until then, I don't even know what the topic will be until it arises. So. 
stay different, stay weird, stay proud.